Okay, so uh, I promise I won't be too long. Uh, <laughs> I know you want to get to the movie, especially since most of you have seen it already, so you're just <laughs> barely getting through this. <laughs> so I want to give some uh, introductory material just to give you some context for the movie, some things to think about during the movie. And then we will have a Q&A afterwards, so you can also ask me some, some other things about it. Although feel free to interrupt and ask me some things about whatever I'm presenting up here as well. Okay, so some facts, uh, and then focusing a little bit more about the Martian atmosphere, uh, talking about Martian soil, and then the orbit. Right? So 10, 10 slides max, don't worry, 10 minutes max. <laughs> okay, this is how, how big the, uh, these three bodies are. Uh, so I scaled them, pictures are drawn to scale in this one. Uh, so if you took Mars or Earth and you put it at the location of the moon, this is how big they would be compared to the moon. So you take the diameter of the moon and you double it, and that's about the diameter of Mars. And then you double that again, and that's about the diameter of Earth. So if you're wondering how big Earth would look that far away, that's about how big. Right? And actually, this is a good uh, rule of thumb is that Mars is about the geometric mean between these two things. So notice how, so I said that the diameter, you have to double it and then double it again. The gravity, so if you take Earth's gravity and divide by two and a half, that's the Martian gravity. And then you divide by two and a half again, that's uh, the lunar gravity. So lunar gravity, you know, I mean, I, I think everybody in this room has seen, maybe some astronauts jumping up and down on the moon and they jump very slowly. Uh, it takes, you know, for, for the same speed that you jump up, it takes six times longer for them to hit the ground again. Uh, on Mars, it would be two and a half times as long. You could jump two and a half times as high, it would take two and a half times as long to land. So, I mean, it's very difficult to film this throughout the whole film. So I don't think the film sticks with this. It, it, it's not too uh, faithful to this fact. Uh, but it's interesting to think about, you know, how, how quickly you'd be moving around on Mars. Right. Our day, 24 hours. The Martian day is just a little bit longer than that. And uh, so in the movie, they throw, out, throw, throw around the word soul. That's a Martian day, but, it, but it's pretty close to an Earth day. So this is, you know, the, the sun rises, and then how long it takes for the sun to rise again on the, the Martian surface. All right, so it's pretty close to an Earth day. Uh, the temperature, though, is widely fluctuating. So one of the things that's trying to kill uh, the protagonist, uh, Matt Damon, is the very cold temperatures on the, on the Martian surface. Uh, although the range is huge. I mean, it's, it's, on a summer day on, on Mars, you can get, you know, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be a nice day, but then the nighttime that same day is going to be pretty cold. Okay, our pressure is nice. So I, I remember when, when I was about eight years old, 10 years old, I remember asking my dad what, what it would be like to be on Mars. And he said the, the atmosphere is very thin. And so, I, and so I kind of played a game with myself that I was like, well, if it's just thin, you just have to like space out your breathing. You just have to breathe really, really hard, right? I'll just breathe twice as hard, three times as hard. Uh, so does anyone have any idea? So if you know the exact answer, I don't want you to say anything. But does anyone know how thin it is in terms of like, so one atmosphere, what, what's the sort of pressure? Just how thin is it? So one atmosphere, this is proportional to the number of molecules uh, in a given volume. So how low is the pressure on Mars? Any guesses? Is it like 10%? Is it like 1%? Is it like a tenth of a percent? 5, 10. It's uh, less than 1%. It's about a half percent, right? 0.006. So it's very, very thin. So my dad was... <laughs> So it was, it was sort of hopeless to, to think that I could just breathe and breathe really hard, right? Uh, and it's mainly made of carbon dioxide. So one thing that, uh, the, that Matt Damon has to do is, well, one thing to keep keeping him alive is an oxygenator. So there's a, there's a machine in the habitat, in the hab, that's uh, turning the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere into oxygen for him to breathe. Uh, just to get an idea of how low a pressure that is, uh, so this is the pressure in the Earth's stratosphere. So you'd have to go 30 miles up in order to get that low of pressure, just to get an idea of how difficult it would be to breathe. And this is, this is actually a flower artist, a Japanese flower artist. Um, by the, and that's how they purposely not capitalized. <laughs> Azuma Makoto. Uh, but what this, what this artist does is just takes flowers and puts them in, uh, attaches them to balloons, and they go up to the stratosphere. You can buy one of these balloons for about 60, 80 bucks. So you can take a kilogram of massive object and get it up to the stratosphere. And if you have a fancy enough camera, you can take these kinds of pictures. I make it sound easier than it actually is. I'm sure it took a lot of work to get these. But I think this gives an idea of just how thin the atmosphere is. You're not gonna, it's going to be difficult to breathe. You're, 
you're in space at this point, right? That, that's up in the atmosphere. So probably the worst, so, so this is uh, probably the, the thing that the film gets least accurate, right? It's the storm that drives the plot, drives the whole plot. Uh, it's towards the beginning, so don't worry, this isn't a spoiler. Um, Matt Damon gets knocked around by a storm, a 100, 100 mile an hour windstorm on Mars, but it would just feel like a gentle breeze. So it wouldn't be knocking anyone over like this because the, because the, the uh, atmosphere is so thin. So maybe not, you know, <laughs> this is the real, real science film series. We're supposed to evaluate uh, what's real and, and not real about the film. This is probably the least real. But not to discredit the author, I mean, he, he, this is, he'll admit that this is just a plot, uh, plot forwarding device. The rest of the, the novel is very, very good. And just to highlight a couple things, uh, so again, spoiler, uh, but most of you have seen it, so that's okay. Uh, Matt Damon grows some potatoes on Mars. And when this movie came out, it, it's interesting. I looked up a bunch of uh, news articles about this. Um, a lot of people are quick to say this will never work. This would never work on Mars. I mean, potatoes need uh, acid, acid soil, and the, the soil on Mars is very basic, or the radiation is going to kill the plants. And but actually, there's a so. I love I love that there exists a place called El Centro Internacional de la Papa. The, the International Center of the Potato. <laughs> uh, and this wasn't created specifically to test this out. I mean, this was created in the 70s. It's in Peru. Uh, and it's, it was created you know, to, to investigate the, the sustainability of growing potatoes. I mean, it was a very, to address hunger and everything. Uh, but since the center already exists, why not explore whether you can grow a potato on Mars? So what they did was they took this very arid soil, very dry soil, and they tried to grow a potato under Martian conditions. So they got the, the pressure down, way down to thin Martian atmosphere. They put carbon dioxide in there. Uh, and they could actually grow potatoes. So the spokesman says, you know, you probably shouldn't fertilize it with human manure. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was his only qualm about the movie. Um, so, so I guess the only caveat here is that uh, the, there probably do exist some microbes in, the, in this desert that don't exist on Mars. Um, so that's, that's maybe, maybe there, it is still sci some science fiction in there, uh, but it seems plausible. You know, it's not, the, it's not in the atmosphere that will kill it. Okay, so this one will, would be, if this was a Mythbusters episode, it would be plausible, right? It wouldn't be, <laughs> it wouldn't be that the myth is uh, dead. What, what is it? Busted, right? Busted. Uh, and actually, one of, so as I said, the, the author went to UC San Diego, studied computer science. So, Andy Weir is really big into computer simulations, and he was able to study the orbital dynamics very well. And he, he put a lot of uh, thought into, again, this is my last spoiler, I promise. <laughs> he put a lot of thought into this rescue mission. Um, it's not too big of a spoiler. They're, they're gonna rescue, they're gonna try to rescue Matt Damon, right? <laughs> it's not too surprising. Uh, so I, I grabbed this, uh, this picture. This was actually confirmed uh, to be an okay trajectory by someone who works at NASA, uh, Laura Burke. So to give you, and I wanted to put this up to give you an idea of what's, uh, of this scene. So Donald Glover is Rich Purnell in the novel. Uh, okay, so let's, let's start off. So, so number one, where that number one is, that's where uh, all the astronauts leave together. So nothing bad has happened yet. Uh, they arrive at Mars, number two, and then this, uh, this catastrophic event, catastrophic event happens pretty quickly into the movie, just five souls, five days, basically. Uh, so they leave pretty much right away on this other path, see the yellow, and they're about to go back to Earth, which, so by the time uh, that's happened, it's been around one year on Earth. Time is gonna pass very realistically in the movie. Right. So the Earth has made it all the way around, uh, and it's almost been a whole year, and then see where that white asterisk is right there? That's where this character has the idea that, well, instead of just landing on Earth, maybe we should accelerate, restock, uh, restock the, uh, the Hermes, which is the thing actually going around this orbit. Uh, now, keep in mind that one Earth year is about, so Mars is only halfway through its trajectory. So Mars is all the way on the other side, up on the upper left. So we can't just immediately teleport anything to Mars. So we sort of have to stall at the same time that we need to give the, the Hermes some addition, a boost. So there's a gravity assist. Um, 
So this thing will pass near the Earth, enough to, so the Earth sort of slingshots it forward, gives it some extra speed. But then it's, the, the path is going to go around the Sun first to sort of stall and wait for Mars to complete the other half of its orbit. And then by the time Mars comes around, see this whole, I get, I'm colorblind, so I think this is magenta. <laughs> What's it, is it magenta? Perfect. Whew, that was the most stressful I've been. <laughs> Uh, so it passes by the sun, and this I don't think is addressed in the movie, how close you're going to get to the sun on this orbit, right? So that's a separate concern that they didn't really address, but maybe, I don't know if the, the Hermes could actually handle being that close to the sun. Um, so, but by the time, so we'll meet up with, uh, with Hermes, in, or, or with, uh, back to the Martian orbit, uh, right on number four. Right? So Mar Mars has almost undergone a full orbital revolution there. Okay, so this gives you some idea of what's, what's all going on, how slow this all is. I mean, this is going to take a couple years, almost. Right. So there's obviously a lot more in the movie that we'll talk about, and we can go through in a Q&A afterwards. Any questions just on anything I've mentioned? So a lot, there's a lot done very well in the movie. All right, just, just on this? Yeah. Did they find out how nutritious those potatoes were after they grew them? Did they find out how nutritious those potatoes were after they grew them? Uh, I think, so I am a physicist and I know nothing about biology. Like, everybody <laughs> in this room knows more biology than me. Uh, I did read that, that uh, they're more prone, so growing potatoes in, that, in basic conditions are more prone to scabe, I believe, believe it's called. So it kind of looks, like, uh, looks like mold, if you, and so I wouldn't eat any of those. Uh, but as far as I know, they were, they were edible, um, as long as they didn't look disgusting. <laughs> I'd love to talk. Uh, so a after the movie, you know, if you have to go, it's it's a long movie, so I don't, I'll understand. I won't be too disappointed. But I'd love to talk more about other things that you saw in the movie. Okay. So enjoy. <laughs>